and author of The Gatekeepers, uh, Chris Whipple. Thank you both for joining me on this afternoon. Very much appreciate it. Um, I'm going to start with you, Sung Young, um, on this. Uh, talk to me about the strategy here. Do you believe the president has a strategy ahead of this meeting with North Korea? I think mostly Americans previously who have met with Kim the first, the second, and this one, the third generational leader, when they meet the North Korean leader and see that the dictator is not only not a raving lunatic, but actually has a sense of humor, is self-effacing, is well informed, they uniformly come away convinced that they have made some deep emotional connection with the North Korean leader by virtue of their own empathy, intelligence, and charisma. I think Mr. Trump is moved by hubris. I think there is a persisting tendency to patronize, even mock North Korea, and the reasons are fairly obvious because they are so weird. But we have to see, we have to understand that North Korea is very good at weaponizing its own weirdness. On the scorecard over the past 25 years on nuclear diplomacy, I calculate conservatively $20 billion worth of goods, cash included, won by the North for Team America and its allies approximately less than nothing a nuclear North Korea. That's the first time I have to say that I've actually heard someone say weaponizing uh, weirdness. <laughs> so we're going to have to put that down in the books. But, but do you think that, that the U.S. is being played by North Korea right now? Well, Mr. Trump has said previously uh, on many occasions that his predecessors have been played, but this is what North Korea does. It's very simple. It's a two-act play, provocation and then post-provocation peace ploy, and it always works. In Hollywood, if a movie is a big hit, you make a sequel. North Korea has been sequelizing this play, this game, for decades now, and it always works because what North Korea seeks is not a negotiated agreement not a fi final resolution, but a protracted negotiation process. And the U.S. is walking right into this trap once again. So, so he brings up a really good point, Chris, this process. So at one point, uh, the president said he wanted total denuclearization. Now it seems as if it is going to be uh, this process. This is exactly what Clinton walked into in 1994. And then they found that there was a secret nuclear program being developed under the Bush administration in the early 2000s, hence the reason why these sanctions were uh, placed back on North Korea. Are we back are we going to be back at the same place that we were then? Well, we could very well be. And, and the thing is that the process here has just been unbelievable. I mean, obviously, talking to North Korea is far preferable to threatening to rain fire and fury down on, on the country. But, we, you know, Chris Hill, the former uh, negotiator, said that this reminded him of speed dating. I think he was, <laughs> I think he was being kind. Has this, the ambassador this, done this, speed, speed dating? I'd this, be to know that. <laughs> this, re this reminds me of a Marx Brothers movie. It's the Hail Fredonia School of Diplomacy. Mm -hmm. I mean, first you have the president accepting a meeting with no preconditions. Then you have John Bolton going on national television saying, we want to do the Libya model. Then the president goes on television and demonstrates that he doesn't know what the Libya model is. Then he calls off the summit because he's been insulted, and now it's back on. So with that kind of process, you really have to wonder where we're going to end up at the end of the day. And let's talk about the intelligence, Clint, or lack thereof. From what I understand, we don't have the kind of intelligence on the ground in North Korea that we had in Iran. So we're not even going to be able to carry out the type of inspections in North Korea that we carried out in Iran. And look where we are with the Iran nuclear deal uh, right now. Even if North Korea were to promise to denuclearize completely, how do we even know that they can do that, that they're going to follow through with that, and that the IAEA can get in there and do their jobs appropriately? We have no access there. It's probably the country where we have the weakest human intelligence resources of any country in the world. <laughs> We have no other allies or partners that have access to it, which we do in some other cases when we deal with these countries. And so when you look at this, other than Secretary of State Pompeo, who do we think can actually go in there and convey a message, and how would we ever enforce it? This is unlike any other situation that we have in the world. So I imagine when this summit happens, whatever it is, both sides will walk away saying they have some sort of victory, but I think the real victory will be in North Korea. And, wait, one, one of the ahead, things I've noticed is North Korea is basically broke. I mean, North Korea financially yeah, needs understand the United Kim Jong -un States. Yeah, can't even pay for his own hotel bill, bill in Singapore. Or does, yeah, doesn't want yeah. to. But th that's another thing that you have to look at is they're desperate. And when, we, when China leaned on them to put these sanctions, that really put the squeeze on them. So you've got to look at it from another point of view as they need uh, they need an influx uh, of money. They need an economy that's going. So what even if uh, they come to the table, North Korea 
his lead, the, Kim Jong Un is going to have to go back to their country with just like, mm, I mean, what are they going to do with their economy? Quickly though, Chris, is an open economy good in maintaining a dictatorship like Kim Jong Un's? How is well, that going to affect his leadership at the end of the day? Well, I don't know. I defer to the experts on that, but it is true that that Donald Trump, in advance, has already made more concessions than anyone else has in, in the past, and and he's already given Kim a summit meeting, uh, making him equal to Trump in, in some ways. Um, and so, you know, he's promised to make North Korea rich. Um, you know, what kind, of, what kind of leverage does he have uh, going into this negotiation, and what kind of knowledge does he have of uh, where